Hi, welcome back to CVEN 305. Today we are going to continue our talk on how to measure strain and how to compute the various uh, components, strain components by using our measurements. Basic idea is to use changes in resistance. in electrical resistance to measure strain. That's the whole idea. Okay, we're going to use electrical resistance, changes in electrical resistance to measure the strain. Okay, and the equipment that does this is called a strain gauge. And actually there is some technology and there is some trick to gluing a strain gauge onto a sample because it's actually quite tricky, it's not a simple thing. Okay, So when you take a later class, when you, when you go and do these kinds of things, it's actually a fairly elaborate thing to go and glue a strain gauge onto, us, onto the surface of a material. So the basic thing that it can do, strain gauge looks like this, it looks like a little strip where uh, there is a wire that's kind of wound on it and the change in the resistance of the wire is what they measure and see you cannot do you can only measure axial strains and not shear strains The shear strain has to be computed uh, uh, in, uh, differently. Okay, so what you can do is you can measure axial strains, but shear strains you have to do a separate computation for it. Okay, so we are now going to look at how do we compute the shear strain? How do we compute shear strain knowing? axial strain components. So to be very specific, I have remember our little re rectangle or even triangle. So I have this rectangle and I have glued a, a strain gauge here, I have glued a strain gauge there and let us say along the diagonal, so A, B, C along the diagonal I have glued a strain gauge there. Okay? So I can measure epsilon A B axial strain along A B. I can measure epsilon B C that is axial strain along B C and I can measure epsilon A C. From these measurements, I need to find epsilon xx, epsilon yy and gamma xy. So in this particular case, by using, so what will, the way we do that is the following. So what will happen after deformation looks like this. So this is A, B and C. So uh, tan phi gamma xy equal to tan phi which for small phi this will turn out to be approximately phi. So if I know the angle phi or the, or the, or the value of tan phi I can then figure out everything else. Okay. So what I do is I know that epsilon xx is A, B over capital A, B minus 1 which turns out to be epsilon a b epsilon y y turns out to be um, b c oh sorry yeah b c over capital b c minus 1 which is epsilon b c so the question is how do i find gamma x y i use cosine rule 
plus assumption that phi is small epsilon xx is small epsilon yy is small so if I know that all these things are small then my approximation becomes very easy it will turn out to be epsilon bc equals epsilon xx cos squared theta theta is this angle sorry theta is this angle so epsilon bc cos squared epsilon xx cos squared theta plus epsilon yy sin squared theta plus gamma xy sin theta cos theta okay so in our particular case so if I use this if I happen to know this guy I know this 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 so I can compute this person let's look at an example and we'll see how that works suppose I have a example 1 I have a strain gauge setup that looks like this strain gauge this way strain gauge that way and strain gauge that way and the angle is at 45 degrees so here is one strain gauge here is the other here is the other ok so I have three strain gauges and they are set at one of them is set at 45 degrees so the way in which we do this is we first choose axis and I am going to pick x is like that y is like that so immediately I will know so let us call this 1 2 3 and I have epsilon xx is epsilon 1 that's easy right epsilon yy is epsilon 2 so what about gamma xy so I know that use use our formula star and get epsilon 3 equals epsilon 1 cos squared 45 degrees that's this angle plus epsilon 2 sorry let me write this properly epsilon yy sin squared 45 degrees plus gamma xy sin 45 degrees cos 45 degrees which turns out to be epsilon 1 times cos 45 degrees remember cos 45 degrees equal to sin 45 degrees equal to 1 over square root of 2 so this will become times 1 half plus epsilon 2 times a half plus gamma xy times a half why are these things half because this is 1 over root 2 that's 1 over root 2 so I will get half ok so from this it's pretty easy it will tell me that gamma xy is 2 times epsilon 3 minus epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 that's it so we can use this formula we can use this result to obtain the shear strain if I know three normal strain measures three sorry axial strain measures okay this is one example this is not typically the way in which uh, these uh, strain gauges are arranged 
because of sensitivity issues when you do this there will be a lot of what is thing what is this thing called crosstalk and also uh, uh, covariance errors in one will cause errors in the other okay so what you want to do is minimize that by keeping the three strain gauges as far away from each other as possible so the most common arrangement is called a rosette it's called a rosette arrangement what do we mean by rosette arrangement i'll put a strain gauge like this i'll put a strain gauge like that i'll put a strain gauge like this okay and the angle here is 120 degrees and 120 degrees and 120 degrees so let us call this 1 2 3 now the question is what is what are the strain components okay so let's see if we can figure this out i'm going to do first choose axis unlike the previous case i cannot choose the axis in such a way that each a strain gauge lies on each axis the best i can do is one of the strain gauges lies on one of the axis the other one doesn't so i'm going to pick my axis to look like this let's call this y and this x so then what happens is this angle will be uh because that's 90 so this is 30 degrees and then this angle is 120 so it's 120 from here so it's 120 plus 90 that is 210 degrees okay so the problem now is okay i know that epsilon 3 equal to epsilon yy that's excellent but epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 have to be figured out by using this formula for each of them we are going to use that and i'll show you that you will get two equations and two unknowns so let's see if you can set that up okay so what will happen is you will get epsilon 2 equal to epsilon xx cos squared let us see 2 is minus 30 degrees plus epsilon yy sin squared minus 30 degrees plus gamma xy cos minus 30 sin minus 30 degrees you see how i got that excellent so this turns out to be epsilon x x so if you remember cos 30 so i'm going to draw this my usual 30 degree thing it's um 1 is to root 3 is to 2 so cos 30 degrees this root 3 over 2 sin 30 degrees is a half okay so cos squared 30 degrees is 3 3 over 4 plus epsilon y y sin square 30 degrees is 1 over 4 plus gamma xy sin 30 degrees will give me cos 30 degree cos of minus 30 degrees is cos 30 so that's root 3 over 2 times minus half how come i got minus half cos minus theta is a minus cos theta so that is my equation so i already know epsilon yy which is epsilon 3 so this looks like epsilon xx 3/4 plus epsilon 3 over 4 plus gamma xy sorry minus gamma xy times root 3 over 4 equal to epsilon 2 so this is equation 1 just to make sure we know this we know this we need to find these two So I need another equation 
which I'm going to write for epsilon 1. So epsilon 1 is going to look like epsilon xx cos squared 210 degrees plus epsilon yy sin squared 210 degrees plus gamma xy cos 210 degrees sin 210 degrees. Okay, so how much is cos squared 210? That is, turns out to be, I'm going to do this uh, using um, Excel. So that's one of the nice things about Excel because I can actually compute this. So cos so equals cos 210 times pi over 180 this whole thing squared point eight seven one five two two so cos two hundred and eighty sorry oh, I'm sorry I wrote two hundred and one I should have written two hundred and ten Point seven five is three halves, so that's pretty good. So this will turn out to be epsilon xx times three halves. So this is epsilon one plus epsilon yy. If you do sine two hundred ten, you will get one half. So it one sorry one fourth three fourth. And then I get plus gamma xy times root 3 over 4. Okay, this is equation 2. Again, just to remind ourselves, we know this guy because this turns out to be the same as epsilon 3. We know this guy we need to find this and this so immediately you can see that I can solve this if I add these two things I will get a very nice result epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 will give me epsilon so will give me epsilon xx times 3 over 4 times 2 is epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. So this immediately gives me epsilon xx is 2 over 3 times epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. That was easy. The other one which I will get is epsilon 1, epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 will give you uh, root 3 over 2 gamma xy gamma xy is 2 over root 3 times epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 so we can actually compute these things pretty straightforward ok the core idea is the following so let me write down the main thing core idea if I have three strain gauges at angles theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 I can write three equations to compute the three components of stone.
They are epsilon 1 equal to epsilon xx cos square theta 1 plus epsilon yy sin square theta 1 plus gamma xy sin theta 1 cos theta 1 epsilon 2 epsilon xx cos square theta 2 plus epsilon yy sin square theta 2 plus gamma xy sin theta 2 cos theta 2 and then epsilon 3 epsilon xx cos square theta 3 plus epsilon yy sin square theta 3 plus gamma xy sin theta 3 cos theta 3 in this these are the unknowns And in Excel or, or, or MATLAB or one of these things, you can write a program that will act, actually compute this very, very fast for you. So you got three equations, three unknowns, and you can solve them. That's it. There's, there's nothing much to it. Okay. With that, we're done. Thanks.